Hello YouTube, how is everyone doing? It's Professional here. So welcome to the first part of my playthrough of Medal of Honor Pacific Assault. So I'm still doing Bully and I'm gonna have another part of Bully up tonight, um, of, like about two hours after this part. Uh, don't worry guys. Uh, but this is another playthrough that I wanted to start out. Uh, this is actually a game that I've never played before. I've played a lot of the Medal of Honor games, but I've actually never played Medal of Honor Pacific Assault. Today is also Pearl Harbor Day. Today marks the 82nd anniversary of the Pearl Harbor attack where the Empire of Japan attacked the US. And so I wanted to play a historical game uh, because of that. But anyways, uh, we're going to be starting this up. And I already like the menu in this game, and I do like the music, though. Hopefully, I don't get a a, a copyright claim. It doesn't seem like I can play this game with a controller, so I'm going to have to play it with mouse and keyboard. Uh, but I wanted to do something in remembrance to those who served. Uh, because a lot of we had a lot of heroes that fought for our freedoms during World War II. They fought against the Imperial Japanese. They fought against fascism. And unfortunately, these days, I think that... A lot of kids just aren't remembering, as remembering of them as a lot of people were in the past. But anyways, let's start this up here. Single player. Uh, new game. You have a uh, to World News Radio from our correspondent stationed on the West Coast. Too hard. Frank Turner. I'm here in San Diego, California, with national. November 20th, 1943. Tarawa. Oh, Tarawa, this was a pretty brutal battle. You don't really see a lot of Pacific World War II games, which is also the reason that I wanted to try this one out. I played Rising Sun, that one I played last year. Or earlier this year, I should say. Just fine with me! Yeah! No way anybody's still alive on that joint! Wouldn't count on that if I was you! Any of you new guys feel like throwing up? Word of advice! Do it now! Three week wonders. That's what we called the new guys. That's all the training they got, and it wasn't enough. It usually didn't last very long. No matter how much training you got, or how strong you are, when you strap up and step on a battlefield for the first time, it changes you forever. Tarawa was just another strip of sand out in the middle of nowhere, but for many of us, it would be the last thing we ever saw. Tommy! I'll see you on the beach! So, Medal of Honor Rising Sun 2 got cancelled, and instead, Medal of Honor Pacific Assault got the, um, made in its place. Damn, I can't even see what I'm shooting at right now. Man, this is brutal right now. These islands were so fortified. Okay, got him. Okay, 
Trying to figure out if there's a way to aim down the sights, but right now just hip firing. What's this here? MG rounds, okay. Oh! Maggot, puke, worm, and scumbag. Just a few of the names I was given by my beloved drill instructor in the summer of 1941. Before then, my biggest problem was delivering groceries and not breaking the eggs. Now every time I turn around, some crazy Jap's trying to gut me. I remember asking the recruitment officer, What's the deal with you guys? I swear to God, he looked right through me and he said, Deal? We're Marines, son. And we deal in lead. <sighs> Next thing I knew, I was on a train for San Diego. Soldiering for the Corps. Boot camp. years earlier September 3rd 1941 so America has not officially entered World War II yet not until two months from now So God created the heavens and the earth. He divided the earth between land and sea, and these he filled with many assorted creatures. The dark, slimy creatures of the oceans God called sailors, and he dressed them accordingly. The flighty creatures of the air he called airmen, and these he clothed in uniforms which were ruffled and foul. The lower creatures of the land, God called soldiers, and he gave them trousers too short, covers too long, and pockets to warm their hands. And on the seventh day, as you know, God rested. And on the eighth day, at all 500 hours, God looked down upon the earth and was not happy. God was not happy! So he thought about his labors. And in his infinite wisdom, God created a divine creature. And this he called a Marine. And these Marines whom God created in his own image were to be of the air, the land, and the sea. And these he gave practical fighting uniforms so that they could wage war against the forces of Satan and evil. And he gave them evening and dress uniforms so they might score with the ladies on Saturday night and impress the hell out of everybody. And at the end of the eighth day, God looked down upon the earth and saw that it was good. But was God happy? No! Because in the course of his labors, he had forgotten one thing. He did not have a Marine uniform, but he thought about it and satisfied himself in knowing that, well, not everybody can be a Marine. This puts me one step above God, because I am a Marine. You remember that, and we'll get along just fine. Now you maggots have exactly three minutes until I expect you standing at attention outside. 
You know, I remember in, um, uh, in Forrest Gump, the drill sergeant, uh, he says, Gump, do you know what your job in this army is? And he's like, to do whatever you tell me to do, drill sergeant. And he says, Gump, you are a genius. But yeah, that drill sergeant definitely practiced that me, Frank. speech. I think maybe he is God. Well, Jimmy, just keep your head down and do what he says and we won't have to find out. Willie, you coming? Oh, yeah, Frank. Oh, hey, Tommy, right? Uh, Tommy Conlon? Uh, my name's Willie Gaines. This here's Frank Minoso and Jimmy Sullivan. Where are you from, Tommy? Oregon. You? Guys, let's head out. We don't want to piss off God, do we? <laughs> Today is the day we separate the men from the girls. You little pukes will learn the basic necessities for survival, and then maybe, I said maybe, you will become a part of the United States Marine Corps. Are you ready? Aye, Sergeant! Now, Baker Squad, you are to sit tight and wait for your babysitter to show up. I am not him. Able Squad, I want to see you ladies hightail it over to my obstacle course on the double. Move out! I want to see nothing but asses and elbows, ladies! Let's make them proud, boys. Stick together. You got it, Frank. Come on, Jimmy. Tommy? So I think in the first mission, I don't think that you were supposed to, um... I don't think that you were supposed to, uh, win that fight. Has to move backwards, okay. And notice what the Marines are using here. You see this? This, this is the Springfield 1903. And the Marines actually use this early on in the war. So early on in the war in Guadalcanal especially, the Marines actually had Springfield 1941's bolt-action rifles. Uh, they Springfield 1903's. Uh, and you're probably wondering, why would the Marines use Springfield 1903's and not M1 Garant's? Then the M1 Garant, um, wasn't the M1 Garant in service? Technically it was. The M1 Garant actually came out in the late 1930s, I believe. But the thing about this is the U.S. Army was first to adopt it. The Marines... The, the Marines didn't get it until... I would say late 1942. Come on, boys. We can do this better than that group. Let's show them what we got. Jump, okay. Now get over that wall! Not bad, ladies! Now run through those tunnels! This is actually real, um... They, they would actually train with live machine gun rounds, so you would actually be going prone, and it was meant to simulate exactly what a combat situation was. I'm not sure if they still do this today, uh, but uh, but this was definitely a common practice back in the day. That was a compliment for that private. One piece. Now let's see how you girls handle the business end of your weapon. Get your butts onto that transport and we'll finish on the firing range. Move it! Man, what a hard ass. 
You said it. Knock it off, you two. That was the hard part. Let's move! Who died and made him, boss? Welcome to my firing range! You will listen to every word I say! I have not lost a single scumbag on my firing line, and I will not lose one today! Do you ladies understand me? Oh, now gather up some ammo, pick a spot on the range, and we'll get to work! Hey, where's the, uh, oh. Take one box each, boys. One box each. Got seven rifle rounds. Okay. Aim at the target in front of you. If you hit one, and I mean the bullseye, wait for it to be replaced with a new one. If you move, it will not be very accurate. So keep those boots planted. If you nail down, you will be more accurate. And getting down in the dirt is even better. So try all three positions. Ready on the right! Ready on the left! Stand by, targets! Fire! Oh, left alt. Well, he loads five rounds for two. Okay. Probably not getting screamed at for that, for getting the rounds. Conlon, Haynes, we have two stumped rifles available for use today. See how many hits you can get on the long range target. Oh, I gotta pick up the sniper rifle, okay. Let's see if we can crouch here. Uh, Z, okay, this will actually be the best. Yeah, see, that's accurate. You can't load it with a stripper clip because the scope is blocking it, so you got a single load. Stop, Frank! Check out Willie! That's right, ladies. I'm a crack shot. Just get me over to Germany and me and this rifle and win that war all by our lonesome. Talk his teeth, Private. But that's some pretty fair shooting. See what you boots can do with the autos. You four head back to the ammo table, and Corporal Bates there will listen to you each an M1928A1 Thompson submachine gun. Do not let those rifles hit the dirt, maggots. They got a Thompson from the weapon station. Okay.
Oh, and this is the early version of the Thompson. You can see how the bolts on the top. Do the target. These weapons are fully automatic, but that does not mean that you should just spray and pray. Take your time to aim and fire the weapon in short bursts. Only. Exactly. How are you supposed to? Looks like you've developed an affinity for automatic weapons, Private Thomas. Your new name is Private Tommy Gun. Do not let me down. Not bad, man, not bad. Fetch your rifles back up and let's move on to the heavier stuff. You fire oh. with the rifles! The MP here will continue to supervise your apparent lack of shooting prowess. Let's go, man. You see the heavy weapons training? Where do I go? Uh... Oh, okay, I see it on the map over there, okay. Hold up, Private. I'm gonna need to take those weapons from you. First things first. Private Conlon, grab that demolition charge from the table. You'll see behind me that we have some beat up jalopies. Today, we're gonna blast the living hell out of them. Private Conlon here is gonna get things started. Private, get your sorry tail down there and plant that charge on one of those cars. That thing is live, so watch yourself. Hold F to lengthen the fuse. Oh. Now get your butt back up here, Private! Okay, so you can, I guess, then... Now we gotta wait 45 seconds. Uh, yeah, that's standing way too close. Even with the, even with the bunker there, that's, that's, that's risky. Shrapnel could, you know, fly up there and hit one of them. That's way too close still. Here we go. In five seconds. Good work, Private Conlon. You may just yet make PFC. Let's move over to the grenade station. That's Private First Class. Uh, grenades. Pick up a couple grenades. Don't worry, ladies. These are training grenades. You think I would trust you with a real grenade? No! Pull the pin and let them fly. See if you can hit some of those barrels out there. Oh, this is where we're... Well, those are very much like live grenades. I think I got it, did I? Yep. Very well, pond scum. Some of you can do better, but it'll do. You don't need those anymore, Private. Now here we have my personal favorite. The M1919A430 caliber machine gun. I want two men. One is to act as a spotter and reloader, the other will fire the weapon. Come on, Tommy, I'll spot for you. Okay, better rip, ladies! 
Mortars. Uh, in the Medal of Honor games, there were several times enemies use mortars on you, but I don't remember any Medal of Honor game where you actually got to use the mortars. You may notice we have a fine piece of kraut craftsmanship on the mortar range. Well, you maggots are the first to get a crack at busting that jerry cab into scrap. The first recruit who gets his mortar set up and hits that truck will win my never-ending incredulous surprise! Okay, what's the target that we're supposed to hit? Rock? So I gotta a aim up when I want to aim closer. Now, except maybe for Minoso here, I most seriously doubt any of you will ever be in charge of anything but your own sorry-ass existence. However, there will be times when lives depend on one of you maggots making the right call in the field. I expect each of you to rise to such an occasion. Sullivan, there's a Marine bleeding to death in the open. You cannot reach him without support. Let me hear your call for suppressing fire. Suppressing fire! Uh, right arrow to... I know so. You're one aggressive son of a bitch. I bet you'll be charging headlong into hell for the core. Let me hear you tell these pansies to move up with you. Move up! Up arrow. Outstanding. Game. You, on the other hand, strike me as someone who'll turn tail and piss himself at the sight of an advancing enemy. Am I right? No, Drill Sergeant! Well, ain't that a shame! If the combat situation dictates, you may need to do just that. You are heavily outnumbered, Private, so you better tell your squad mates to fall back. Fall back! Good. I don't care if you're sucking face with Rita Hayworth herself. You hear a Marine call out, you best respond. Private Conlon, you are being fired upon. Your squad is out of position. You need to get your fire team back into formation. So let's hear you rally these boys. Let's top Regroup! Good, let's go. All right, men. That's enough for today. Good work out there. But oh my god, Gaines! You've just been shot! Hit the deck! I said hit the deck! <laughs> he just, like, fell like... Now, there's two things to do if and when you are hit by an enemy in combat. Number one, apply pressure to the wound. Next, if you can, call for a corpsman. If you're lucky, one will be around somewhere nearby. Private Sullivan! I understand you have a medical background. Yes, Sergeant. Well, lucky us. Make your way over there a bit and play doc for us. Conlon, you take Private Gaines over to doc to get him patched up and then hightail it back over here ASAP. Careful where you squeeze me there, Tommy. Move it. Hey, thanks for the ride, Tommy. Well done, Private Conlon. But you've just been shot as well! Hit the deck! Apply pressure to that wound, Private, or we will lose you! Uh, B? Now, call on that corpsman so we can get you patched up and back into action. I'm calling H, uh... Oh. 
I guess I gotta hold it. Okay. All right, men. Good work today. I do believe that with a little more work, you may have a fighting chance. Let's get scrubbed up for mass. Move out! Restructuring of position. That's fire 144 accuracy. Uh, reporting. A media storm is brewing from the likes of newspaper magnate William Randolph Hearst and RKO Pictures. It seems Hearst is none too fond of radio writer turned director Orson Welles. Hearst claims Welles' new film, Citizen Kane, is taking inflammatory shots at him personally. And an objective, so uh, I guess I missed one then. I guess for 100% accuracy, but then I hit everything? Okay. Pearl Harbor. I hope that you guys like my, uh, my cosplay for this part. Uh, this is not a real, you know, uniform, but I tried to, uh, I tried to make, uh, as close to the uniform as I could to the game here, so I hope that you guys like this part. For more than two centuries, the United States Marine Corps has fought for freedom. That's extremely impressive. Their infamy, their legend, was forged during the hell I don't think I could ever do that. That's takes a lot of training and skill. Not exist without hardship, and the price of victory is paid in the blood of men. Faith, courage, and sacrifice paved their road, and that long journey began in the early hours of December seventh. 1941. That's a Japanese ship. Can I can already tell from the crest. So the reason that Japan ultimately attacked Pearl Harbor is because in 1933 Japan took over Manchuria, which was northern China. In 1937, they invaded the rest of China, and when Japan invaded China, they were committing horrible atrocities in China. They murdered over 200,000 civilians in Nanking in two weeks, and uh, the U.S. told Japan to stop, to stop their attacks on China, because Ch China was a massive trading partner of the U.S. at that time. The U.S. had an open-door policy with China. Japan refused to stop their offensive in China, and so what the U.S. did was they sanctioned Japan. Now, in this time, 90% of Japan's oil for their war machine actually came from the U.S. The vast majority of their oil that they used for their uh, wars came from the U.S. But when the U.S. sanctioned it, they lost all of that. And so what Japan did was they got really pissed off and they decided to attack the U.S. And they thought that they wouldn't, that the U.S. wouldn't be able to interfere when when uh, Japan attacks uh, lands in Southeast Asia, other countries in Southeast Asia, where they could try to take oil from them. And expand their empire. You could pick a worse place to spend your time, let me tell you. Chief McAfee escorting Private Thomas Conlon. Uh, yes, sir. Private Conlon. You're clear to proceed. Welcome to Pearl. That's the officer's quarters back there. But you and I work for a living, so that's probably the last But you and I work for place. a living, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, that big building up there is Paquette Hall, enlisted quarters. Hell, those guys even have a swimming pool. Rough going, let me tell you. Imagine how scary this is that back headquarters. He can come across you're just staff, you're just a sailor at Pearl Harbor. Well, you're walking around the base, Chief and out of Pacific nowhere, the attack just happens. Of it anyway. They send a couple more Hitler's way every week now. Rest of the area is mostly the submarine base. 
Now yeah, those bubbleheads kind of keep to themselves, you know? It's being cooped up like that all the time. Makes them a little crazy. That big one's the dive tower where they practice rescue. When you get in trouble in a sub, there ain't much anybody can do. Fish Food City. <laughs> Say hey, Joe. Yankees call you up yet? Nah, I think they're having a hard time finding me, Chief. I got a PT skipper who's gonna give you a ride over. But you pulled a cherry assignment. Arizona just got an overhaul in 31. Yeah, she's a good ship. Look at these bums loafing off up here. Good thing the war's in the other ocean. I uh, hope I'm not interrupting. Absolutely not, sir. Just going over the latest specs with the men, sir. You guys ready to get this foot slug over to the AZ? Sure thing, sir. What the hell? Sheesh. Damn, Those are zeros. Somebody's gonna catch hell for buzzing HQ like that. Hey, Army! Look at the meatballs on the wing! Watch when we cross here. I think I got one. God, oh, they're even crashing into each other. The soundtracks in these games were always amazing. God damn, I got hit there. There is a bonus objective I read to save um, three sailors, so I guess this is that here. One more sailor. Oh my 
my god. Rescue three or more injured sailors in the docks. Okay, good. The officer didn't make it. This must have just been absolutely terrifying for the people at Pearl Harbor. God, look at that. You see so many sailors in the water where in Medal of Honor Rising Sun you didn't really see that.
on getting that other room. A lot of men actually went down with the ships. They actually drowned. Imagine how horrible this must have been. A lot of bodies from the Arizona were never able to be recovered because of that. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what I'm talking about, is there were sailors that were trapped in some of the rooms, they got flooded. They literally went down with the ship, they couldn't, they couldn't get out. And I, uh, I guess I got killed by an explosion. Okay, this isn't... Okay, yeah, that's... I guess that's what I had to do. find sailors that are injured. Oh. Well, I guess that's what I had to do originally. Okay. I know in this part there was, like, sailors that I had to rescue. Uh...
Oh, there we go. to smash this stuff, okay. Medic, I need a medic over here. Cal, uh... Got one, okay. Guns down. Oh, now we're talking, okay.
Yeah, 2 o'clock means slightly to the right. down 60 planes. Oh. This was one of the worst days in American history. Yesterday, that's President of FDR. 1941, a date which will live in infamy. The United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. I regret to tell you that very many American lives have been lost. I ask that the Congress declare that since the unprovoked and dastardly attack by Japan on Sunday, December 7th, a state of war has existed between the United States and the Japanese Empire. Okay, so I guess we'll probably leave it off here, guys. Uh, in our Pearl Harbor. With the unbounding determination of oh. Oh, so the menu changes every time, uh, depending on where you're at. And that was President Roosevelt addressing the nation nearly eight months ago. 
Now back to Walter Brennigan in the United States. And I'll talk more history as we go through the uh the playthrough, guys. But basically Japan thought that they could knock America out of the war just like they tr did to Russia because what happened was the Japan had gotten into a war of Russia in 1904, it was 1904 to 1905 um, Russo-Japanese war. Basically what happened was uh, Japan wanted to colonize Korea and Russia wanted to colonize Korea. Japan told Co um, uh, Russia that they should colonize Korea in half. But Russia said that they wanted all of Korea. Japan attacked the Russian fleet, and th this one was a naval attack. This wasn't from the air, and Japan just completely destroyed the Russian fleet. Completely obliterated them, and the Russians, while they were able to send some troops to Asia, they were never able to regain their naval power in Asia after that sneak attack. And because of that, Japan got overconfident for, you know, 36 years later, tried to do an attack on Pearl Harbor, thinking that it was going to work. But there's a big difference between the Russian Empire and the U.S. The big difference is, is that when the Russian Empire got hit, its navy got hit in Asia. And when the, the, the U.S. got uh, hit, it got hit in Hawaii. It got hit on its own soil. And not only that, but the U.S., Japan did not underestimate the U.S. resolve, but also the U.S. industrial power. The, J Russia did not have the same industry that the U.S. did. The U.S. was able to ramp up production. Japan did not uh, did not foresee that. And the same guy, uh, the same guy who planned the Pearl Harbor attack, Admiral Yamamoto, he actually didn't want to attack America. But basically, this was all mostly Tojo's idea. But he went along with it. He still did the plan. But there's debate over whether he had said this or not. But Yamamoto had said. I fear that we have only awoken a sleeping giant, but this was pretty much the end of Japan in World War II. When they had attacked America, they have, they lost. They had no chance at that point. It was over for them. Only Japan could delay the inevitable at that point until, um, until defeat. But pretty much uh, that is it for this part, guys. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everyone. Have a wonderful day, guys.